So it is 2FM live at Electric Picnic and our lovely cabin. And I'm joined, my first guest anyway, the weekend, I'm joined by Cyril Han. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. How's and it it's going really well. So we were just talking there. You just flew in from New York anyway this morning. So it's just kind of all very tiring, I would imagine, at this stage. Right, right. I mean, I'm, I'm getting used to it, but I, I'm getting really good at napping. It's, it's <laughs> definitely a skill I've, I've acquired. <laughs> Everyone needs a good disco nap, I think, sort exactly. of gets them going. <laughs> so I have to go back to because I was just saying to you, like, I'm just such a fan of, of all of your remixes that you've done. And I know that you do actually have a single coming out right. in October here. I got excited the other day because I saw it on iTunes and then I saw it wasn't out till October, which I found a little bit annoying, but that's, that's <laughs> a good complaint. It's a good complaint. Get the hype going. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, obviously the first time I heard of you, which I think so many people did as well, was the Destiny's Child Say My Name remix. Right, right. And when you first hear it, it takes you a moment because you're thinking, I know that song, but I, but I feel like I, I don't. It's just... Right. <laughs> at what point do you listen to... Because your remixes do all have that, that same kind of style to them. And what I wondered is, when do you listen to a song and think, that would sound re really great if I slowed it right down. Right. I mean, the slowing down really depends on the song. It, it's not a, like a recipe apply yeah. all the time. Um, I think for that for that remix, I had an instrumental that I really liked, and I just tried out different samples, and the Destiny's Child one was just like a perfect match. And I was like, yeah, this this sounds good. And are you are you a fan of Destiny's Child over the years, or not particularly? I know um, I personally am not and you made me like that right. song. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, I you know, it was one of those. I was always sort of into like hardcore punk music growing up when I was younger. So I just see them on TV on like MTV, but uh, I never like bought their CDs or anything. You know. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And were you surprised by the reaction that that song had? I know obviously there's been other remixes since then, but that was the one that I think everybody was talking about. I think. I, know, I remember Romy from the XX had, um, right, she right. picked it, I think it was on their website, but also I think she'd picked it. She was on a, a, a guest on a BBC Radio 1 show. Yeah, yeah. And it was Annie Steve Mack Stevens, I'd heard think, saying yeah. that she heard her playing it that day and, and said, I, I have to get that song. I mean, it's it's incredible how it, how it really took off. I mean, it just yeah, shows yeah. that you just need one <laughs> to get your name really right, out right. there. Yeah, I mean, what, what I like about it is that, you know, sort of the internet is really democratic these days. You can have like, no support whatsoever, no press, and you can upload a song, and if people like it, it has the potential to, you know, go viral, which I think is really great, but definitely did not expect <laughs> anything like that. I mean, I was still in school at the time, working in a coffee shop, so yeah, it was it was just something I did for fun. Yeah. Never thought I could do music for a living, so yeah, it's, it's a lot great. has happened. Because <laughs> I think the last time I don't know it was like two mi over two million plays or on on SoundCloud, and then it's it's on YouTube as well. So it's it's incredible how it's taken off. And is there any? Uh, obviously, I kind of have all, all the various remixes that you've done, and I have them in in certain CDs and USB keys over the years, but. It would be great to have it as a whole package. Is there ever any possibility of releasing that? I mean, probably right, trying to get right. clearance may not be the yeah, easiest. Yeah, I mean, it's def that's definitely always the issue. There has been, there have been some labels that have released them on vinyl, um, just on their own. Like we didn't give permission with that, but I, th yeah. I think it's cool that people like <laughs> have the guts to do it. So there are some vinyls floating around for for the collectors, but yeah, I don't know about a package. It's definitely. Samples are always like a tricky issue, right? So yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to have like a sort of a cell wax kind of too many DJs yeah, yeah, mix yeah. of all those tracks would be great. Yeah, never even thought of that. That's and then cool. the Solange "Losing You" as well, which is an, another song that the original is actually it is a great song anyway. But your remix of it just kind of it just adds that extra dimension. And when you're playing now tonight, because I haven't got to see you live before, and I'm looking forward to that. Obviously, you're on shortly. Are you going to be playing a lot of those remixes tonight, or is it a totally different set when you're playing? Um, yeah, I think I think I want to try and play a couple of my my own songs and remixes today for sure um i find people often like you know that's why they come to see me not not to see me dj they want to hear my songs that's sort of what i learned over the last couple of months give them what they want yeah yeah <laughs> i mean you know if that makes them happy it makes me happy too so and <laughs> so how is how, how is like touring wise where are you kind of at at the moment i mean is there is the whole summer being full of festivals for you yeah i mean it's it's been a lot of shows this year i so my fourth time back in Europe on tour, um, played a lot of festivals. This is sort of the last few shows of the summer, and then I do a North American tour with uh, Ryan Hemsworth for three months, and then I come back for the Animac tour. That's so, yeah. Yes, that's in the Academy in November. You were yeah, here yeah. actually before. You played in the Button Factory, I think it was, in yeah, Dublin. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah so 
Dublin is certainly kind of taking you under its wings. Yeah, here I had anyway. no clue. I had no clue. It was crazy. It was a sold out show and a, a big venue too. So you can imagine for my first tour, just walking on that stage and seeing like this venue with a balcony just sold out. It was And incredible. it's a great venue. It really lends itself to those sort of gigs. It's, it's really nice. Yeah. But, but I remember there's a couple of acts I find like yourself, um, like John Talbot and people like that, that people some people go and they get their tickets because they've heard other people talking about them even though they right. don't know them and I know I remember there was a huge buzz when you were playing the button factory from people who'd said to me I bought a ticket and I've never heard any of his stuff but right. everyone keeps telling me I have to go and check out <laughs> this guy it's really great to hear <laughs> I like that but I'm sure they're all gonna be here tonight <laughs> so the anyway the the single which is perfect form and it's the EP of it I know there's there's a couple of remixes on that and right, that's right. gonna be out in October what was it like putting that together because that was totally your own material where you weren't yeah, yeah. And, Probably more freedom because you're not working with someone else's, you know, samples and things. Right, was it? right. Um, I mean, it's really great to finally. I think why I started out doing remixes is just because, you know, I didn't have connections to work with vocalists. So you find these acapellas on the internet and you work with that. So it's really nice to be able to do original songs and seek out vocalists that you want to collaborate with i'd so. say no problem getting vocalists maybe. <laughs> no no it's not <laughs> it's yeah not i didn't issue, think yeah. it would be <laughs> and who would you love to work with in the future is there anyone that kind of that you would have looked up to when you were sort of starting out making music that you thought in years to come that would be a dream guest to get right right i mean there's tons of people um i really like ink these days um they're from the states i believe i mean that's I've, infinity they have that track as well isn't it or um, I'm not sure they have a really nice like R&B vibe, but yes. pretty laid back. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd love to work with them. I think that'd be cool. And any plans for, for an album? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this year has just been sort of been about playing a lot of shows and, you know, give people a chance to get to know me and um, release a single or an EP and next year will be less shows and more studio time so I'm really excited for that yeah well I'm certainly looking forward to that I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, the single coming out in October cool. and cool. we'll get to see you in the Academy with Annie Mack and Duke Dumont as well Definitely. November 30th so uh, Cyril Han it's been a pleasure and I'm really looking forward to seeing you play shortly have a great gig thanks so much for having me <laughs>